There are three main components to why uh, poker has grown so much in the U.S. And that is the television shows, the availability of cash games on the internet, and Chris Moneymaker. I mean, with a name like that, he was born to play poker. I'm sure he's bored of people asking him, is that your real name? If I had a nickel for every time I was asked, I would never work again. No one would have predicted that Chris Moneymaker would win, including Chris. He's a very reckless, very aggressive player. I thought I was in, you know, heaven. His instincts were spot on. He was an accountant in Tennessee who played mainly online. In fact, I don't think he'd ever played in a live tournament before, certainly not on the scale of the World Series. Me and my buddies watched the movie Rounders and learned how to play Texas Hold'em. We started playing that just about every weekend. And after a while, I got to be real good at it. I thought it was a cash tournament. I got midway through and I realized it was, a, it was a satellite tournament for the World Series of Poker. I was furious. I didn't want to get into a satellite because you don't get any money for it. You know, I'm basically playing against these 17 other guys for nothing. I went out and played the World Series and now I'm sitting here talking to you. My first memory of it was that we were on the, we were on the, the, the cusp of something very big. Suddenly we were faced with a field of over 800 players when beforehand the fields had been much, much smaller. And so the influx of all these players created a very, very exciting atmosphere. And of course, everybody's sights were set on the two and a half million first prize. They said, when I'm bluffing, my nostrils flare. I didn't believe it, but just in case, I was going to use that to my advantage. And day three and day four, whenever I had a real strong hand, I was doing a lot of things, but I made sure my nostrils flared. Chris offered Sammy a deal, a 50-50 split of the first and second place prize money, and they would just play for the bracelet. And Sammy, overconfident, maybe a little bit arrogant, turned down the deal. When he turned down my 50-50 split when I had a chip lead, he's telling me, I'm a better player than you. And when someone perceives himself to be a better player than you, the way to beat that person is to put pressure on them. Sammy, I, I believe, was trying to set a trap for me when he flopped top pair. And then a straight came out there. And you don't want to risk all your money against an amateur. Could have it. He didn't believe that an amateur would have the balls to push all in on a complete bluff. I knew I was in his head. That's where I wanted to be, in his head. I knew if I caught a hand in the next four or five hands, I was going to bust him. I had to catch something, and he had to catch a small piece. The final hand pretty much played itself. Sammy's in position, he's got a jack-10, pretty decent starting hand, especially heads up. He makes the raise, Chris has got 4-5, and he makes a speculative call, and he gets the ideal flop, jack-4-5. So Sammy Farhar's made top pair, which is incredibly strong heads up, and Chris has flopped two pair. You just know that the money is all going to end up in the middle, and fate is going to decide. It's a five. Yeah. I really didn't realize what I had done. Uh, I was excited, nervous, ready to go to bed, all, all rolled up into one. And I didn't realize how big it was until much later. The best thing for me winning the World Series of Poker was when 9-11 happened, my dad had his retirement money in the stock market. And when the stock market crashed, he lost roughly $500,000. And me winning the World Series of Poker, I was able to write him a $500,000 check. And that was a great feeling to be able to do that for him.